Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he will not give in to growing international pressure calling for him to come to terms on a ceasefire deal with Hamas. Thousands of protesters have taken to the streets there in Israel demanding action. These demonstrations erupted following the announcement that another six hostages were killed in Gaza. Their bodies have been recovered and returned to Israel. Among the victims was Israeli-American citizen Hirsch Goldberg Polin. On Monday, his mother gave an emotional speech during his funeral ceremony about her journey over the last 332 days. Amidst the inexplicable agony, terror, anguish, desperation, and fear, we became absolutely certain that you were coming home to us alive. But it was not to be. Now I no longer have to worry about you. I know you are no longer in danger. Meanwhile, in Gaza, the UN is rushing to distribute polio vaccines to roughly 640,000 children there across the Strip. The World Health Organization says the vaccination effort has already reached more than a quarter of the children targeted in this campaign. Israel has agreed to multiple temporary pauses in fighting, allowing workers to try and stop the spread of the disease. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayeb is in Tel Aviv with more on all of this. Well, Prime Minister Netanyahu is really pushing back against massive pressure to agree to a ceasefire and hostage release deal with Hamas following the killings of six captives in Gaza, including 23-year-old Israeli-American Hirsch Goldberg Poland. Now, this is as tens of thousands of Israelis took to the streets for a second night to demand Netanyahu bring an end to the war in Gaza and free the remaining hostages. But in what appeared to be a rare act of contrition, Netanyahu addressed the nation asking for forgiveness, but his tone quickly shifted, saying he would not give in to pressure, and what some are describing as a lecture, insisted Israel must retain control of the Philadelphia corridor. Now, this is a narrow strip of land along Gaza's southern border with Egypt uh, that he says is used to smuggle weapons, an allegation both Egypt and Hamas deny, with Hamas saying there will be no deal unless Israeli forces withdraw. Now, speaking to reporters outside the White House, President Biden said it was clear Netanyahu isn't doing enough to end the war, as thousands gathered in Jerusalem on Monday to say their last goodbyes to Israeli-American Hirsch Goldberg Poland, whose body was recovered from a Gaza tunnel alongside the remains of the five other hostages. Now, initial autopsies found all were shot dead within days of being found. And as the war on Gaza rages on, at least eight Palestinians were killed in an Israeli strike while they were trying to buy bread. And all of this, of course, is as the UN's campaign to vaccinate 640,000 Palestinian children against polio continues. Still, Prime Minister Netanyahu's address to the nation continues to be criticized, with the opposition leader Yair Lapid calling it unfounded political spin and said Netanyahu's insistence Israel's security relies on its forces remaining in the Philadelphia corridor has no relation to reality. Errol. Yes, Taya, thank you for that. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us from the White House with more on this. As we heard there from MTR Scott, President Biden says he doesn't think Netanyahu is doing enough to get a hostage deal done. But specifically, what more does the White House want to see from Netanyahu? That's a great question because that criticism was, to put it mildly, muted or less than declarative. The president was asked if he thinks Netanyahu is doing enough, and he answered with just one word, no and didn't elaborate beyond that. The pressures on Netanyahu in Israel are not the only pressures. He's feeling international pressure to either change the trajectory or accelerate the trajectory of these ceasefire and hostage release talks. He's getting it from the hostage families. He's getting it from U.S. officials. He's getting it from political figures, and he's getting it inside his own nation. We know that the president continues to express optimism. When we asked yesterday, why he thinks this latest effort will be different than the previous efforts. He said hope springs eternal and said they are working hard at this. We know they met in the White House Situation Room yesterday, the president, the vice president, key members of the hostage negotiation team. But at this point, it is optimism, it is aspiration with little concrete proof to show these latest efforts, this latest proposal has any chance of being more effective than the previous efforts. And Scott, from what you can tell, is the Biden administration considering any shifts in policy or support in order to apply new pressure to Israel? Because Israel is also waging a campaign in the West Bank, separate from what's happening in Gaza, and they've got pressure from the north uh, from Lebanon as well. 
Now, there have been multiple reports of a you know, last make it or take it or leave it deal or proposal that the U.S. is behind along with its partners. Um, put those reports aside for the moment. There are any number of efforts diplomatically to continue talks, to continue negotiations. We know that briefing that they had in the White House Situation Room is not going to be the last one. But in terms of changes in strategy or changes in approaches, Netanyahu is making the argument back home that weakens his hand. If the U.S. questions his interest and his techniques, it gives Hamas more leverage at a time when Hamas needs no more leverage. We do know, though, Errol, there is an enhanced urgency each day, especially with the murder of six hostages this weekend. There is an urgency for a deal. It's just not clear there's a pathway to one. All right. Scott McFarlane, we appreciate your report.